All right, if there is one cancer in the golf swing, right, the thing that wreaks havoc on the most people, right, and gets everybody the most upset, it is the open club face, okay? And there's varying degrees of how you could suffer from this open club face. There is the all out and out push slice, okay? There is just the little bit higher, weaker shot that keeps leaking to the right that's just annoying. But I'm going to explain to you today, like you've never seen before, just how small and minuscule an open club face can be so you can directly understand it to make those corrections, right? Because there's some of you who hit your irons fine, but then you get to a longer club and it starts to leak off you know, to the right maybe for a right-handed golfer. There's this little weak fade or this little weak tail. Others of you, it just happens from time to time. Some days you're great and then it starts kind of creeping in there. And sometimes too, you don't want to remember, you know, um, an open club face is just higher, kind of weaker iron shots also. But really it's, it's a very detailed, very small thing that can lead into a bigger problem. Because once the club face gets a little open, we start trying to throw it from the top, throw our wrist to close it up at the bottom, start bringing our shoulder over. Now our balance gets a little compromised. There's a lot of reactions to an open club face that are not very good. Some of it is just as simple as you're gonna lose some distance and you've gotta swing harder to try to get that same club to, the, to your normal, your normal uh, distance, okay? So to give you an example, right? I have my flight scope lined up here. I just hit a shot with an open club face with a six iron. That ball traveled 147 yards, which I lost some distance because my club face, right, my face to target, FTT, was 9.8 degrees right or open, right? That ball ended up going for a six iron 24 yards offline. Something really important to remember here that the less loft you have on a club when you go from an iron into a driver with less loft, that same nine degree open club face could go as much as 50 yards offline, okay? Really, it exponentially starts to, starts to really compound as that face gets straighter and straighter. Now, when that thing says 9.8 degrees open, right? What I want you to remember here, how small this is. If this was a clock, right? And I went from say 12 o'clock, this is 12 o'clock straight up and down, and I just opened it to one minute right there. So 12 o'clock, now one minute to the side, right? <laughs> That is six degrees open, okay? And it looks like a lot with this giant club. I'm not sure if you're seeing that there. From here to here, that is six degrees open, okay? That last one, I was a little bit more than that, so maybe right in between one and two minutes, okay? And if you are, have, have spent any time on a launch monitor, if you're just two to three degrees open, or even two to three degrees closed the other way, that ball is not gonna go straight and it's gonna start to wreak havoc with your mechanics as you start to try to uh, change your aim, change your club path, change, change the club face, do whatever that we, we do you know, to usually make a correction on the ball not going straight. So I'm gonna give you some very functional ways to be able to get that club face squared up for your particular swing, whether you're wildly open or you're just a little bit open. So stay tuned here. All right, so I hope you all can see this, right? I've got the giant club, but I've got a little silver dot there on the end of the grip, just to show you just degrees of rotation when we're talking about an open club face. Okay, you see the position of the silver dot? Watch how little I'm gonna move my left wrist. And that right there, right, from say starting to here, that's about 45 degrees open as far as the club face position, just going from here to there. Okay, so it's very negligible in terms of just, you know, the, obviously the club face looks some degree difference. We just rotated that face 45 degrees more open. I'm gonna have to twist the handle and twist the club so much more through the shot to get it squared up. Now, if I, let's just say this was my good square position and you know, I'm hitting the ball well one week and then the next week, I'm just here. That's probably the equivalent of six degrees, just going from here to there right? Imagining that on a clock face, right? It doesn't take a whole lot for you to really change the dynamics of your swing. And I know because I've been through it of me just losing the ball to the right all of a sudden when I'd been hitting the ball well for, for weeks at a time, okay? So that little bit of twist, just imagine that on a clock, right? We're down here somewhere around nine o'clock. 
and then I'm bringing it slowly back up and over until now it's basically at 12 o'clock and I am hitting slices so far right they're not even going to be findable. Okay, So the key is, is finding your position at the top. Where do I need to be in order to hit the sh straight golf shots, right? And there might even be some of you out there, you've got too much of this and the ball's hooking and we need to dial it this way a little bit, right? And we're talking just small degrees, okay? And that's the top of backswing position, right? Obviously, when we come down from there, there's still some club face issues to be thinking and dealing with at, at that point also. So you see, it really doesn't take a whole lot for that club face to twist open, right? They've got some great swing trainers out there. I've got one of them here. This one's called the Pro Sender that helps people isolate and feel those spots. So sometimes you might need something like that to help, right? So basically this Pro Sender, when I get up to the top, as I make that twisting movement to close the club face, you see how my trail wrist kind of just moves over into the cuff, okay? So I'm feeling that cuff up against my hand and then I'm keeping that as I come down, right? That's keeping the club face a little more closed or strong, right? So definitely this sensation at the top, people say it's kind of like a waiter holding a tray. You also notice too that when you're dealing with an open club face, if my trail elbow can feel more external, it typically tends to help me close the club face, right? This is a closing movement. Vice versa, when somebody's trail elbow starts to push this way or they start to get longer, almost invariably the club face is more and more open. It's one of the biggest reasons that people don't understand why they slice a driver. It's because they're taking a longer swing where their wrist conditions are getting more sloppy, the club face is getting more open through their elbows and how that's kind of changing their wrist. So you can look into something like the Pro Sender, it's very handy, you know, and this, this angle, we keep it until we get down to impact and then it starts to come off this cuff but it's definitely giving you some of that closing sensation. So another swing trainer that I use for those that have a more open club face are these George Gankas G-snaps. I've got one on my lead wrist, right, which I'm, I'm pushing my lead hand down, and you're seeing it's making that G-snap, and this one I'm pushing it back. Okay, and the thing that you'll see when I use this with students, it's very helpful, but it feels very easy to do it down here. When you actually put a golf club in your hands and then you go back to the top and you try to get them to snap, it takes a little bit of effort, right? It's a little different doing it back here as I'm bent over, turned, rotated, and then I'm trying to get that isolation of me closing the club face and doing it effectively, right? Open, closed, open, closed. Maintaining that, hitting. So. Those are very good. Like I said, these are a little more on the aggressive side, but you might want to check those out to see if that kind of help gives you the club face position that's most desirable for you. Probably one of the biggest things is just having that understanding. It's just called handle twist, right? When we were looking at that silver dot and you're seeing it turn in space, but just understanding that, okay, my ball went 10 yards to the right, went into a sand trap. Your club face was probably two to three degrees open. Say if you're hitting a seven iron, you're just making a little tiny adjustment. Like I'm talking just a, 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 a millimeter of turn to get that club face to square, okay? You don't wanna overcorrect, close the club face, hit the next one left, or we definitely don't wanna keep repeating that open club face pattern. So we're not talking about much. These swing trainers are aggressive because we're closing them down aggressively all at once. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes there are a lot of you out there that just need a little tweak, right? So you're trying to get a better sense of just doing some of this twist, right? I like to do it at the top as I start down so that I'm not doing it as I'm trying to hit the golf ball. We don't want to do it late, right? It's like having a project do at work. It's not great to do it at the very last interval, last day, last night. We want to have that thing set up and done a little earlier as we get to the top. So usually the most effective way that I've found for my students to get that club face dialed in is to do it somewhere near the top of backswing. Okay, my face is a little open. Let me just give it a little twist, right? A little twist as I get to the top. That squares it up early and now I'm ready to go as I come down. It makes a big, big difference because definitely probably one of the most common misses is something leaking off in this fade to slice pattern. 
If we can isolate and get that down, it makes a big difference. But remember, it doesn't take much. A little bit goes a long ways, okay? And then once you kind of get it dialed in, you want to just put that on rinse and repeat, just automatic pilot of having the same hand, that same twist to the top, because you know that's your position. That's what the great players in the world are able to do. Once they get it, they just do it over and over and over again. It doesn't change. They go practice it, feel it, repeat it, do it the next round. Hey, it's your coach, Zach Allen here, and I hope you're enjoying today's lesson. In all of my years of coaching and studying the golf swing, I've discovered there's only one thing that separates the best ball strikers in the world from the rest of us. I call it the magic move, and you can use it to generate effortless power and consistency in your game. Since I don't have the time in this short video, I've put together a three-part web class where I show you everything you need to know, nothing held back. I call it my Magic Move training series. And you can get the entire thing free of charge by clicking the link in the description below. You won't find these videos anywhere else. So click the link right now and join the over 100,000 golfers who have already gone through this incredible training. And now let's jump back into today's lesson. So very short, simple drill for today's lesson is just start to associate your direction with where the club face and your wrist and hand position is as you get near the top. I feel like that's the easiest way to isolate so we can hit straight, predictable shots. Those of you that are trying to do it down here, right, trying to square the club face down there, it doesn't work out as well. It's too late interval, okay? So basically go out to the driving range, warm up, hit a shot, so I could feel that club face was open before I even hit it. So that club face was 3.2 degrees right. Okay, that ball went eight yards right of target. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put just a little bit of closing force there. I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna put a little closing force there, what I associate with three degrees. It is nice having a launch monitor because it's telling me exactly how much that club face was open or closed, but even without it, Okay, so that was 1.8 degrees open. Now that ball was five yards offline. And I know you're not gonna see a difference in my swing there, but I made a minor adjustment there. I didn't quite get it spot on, but now that shot is kind of within my, I call it my shot cone, right? Of like, that's an acceptable shot for me, right? Once it starts getting a little too open, a little too closed, now I've gotta kinda just turn that dial a little bit. And that dial, is that little silver tip you saw right here. Just that very small, minute hand movement makes all the difference in the world. So I hope that helps get rid of some of that tail. Um, it's definitely done it for my students here in person. If you have any more questions or comments, feel free to leave that below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps keep the channel moving along and progressing. We've gotten a lot of subscribers lately and I'd love to see more interaction on this channel. And then the last thing, here's another video if you're more interested in different other ways and techniques to get rid of a slice or maybe some other things that could be occurring. Here's another one that you might want to take a look at too. All the best and uh, I'll see you next golf lesson.